Hateful to me as the gates of Hades, is that man who hides one thing in his heart and speaks another. After winning the underworld as his special domain when the world was divided between him and his two brothers, Hades was the Olympian god of the underworld, son of the titans Cronus and Rhea. He was the brother of Demeter, Hera, Hestia, Poseidon, and Zeus. Based on the mythology, Hades lived apart from the other gods and had little to do with the affairs of the living. His realm was the underworld, the kingdom of all dead mortals. The Greek god was the oldest brother among the Olympians, who drew for his share the netherworld and ruled over the deceased. The name Hades, according to ancient etymology, means invisible, thus the god was sometimes called the ruler of the invisible world. Hades was the son of the titan Cronus, son of Gaia and Oranos, who married his sister, and whose union gave birth to the original six Olympians of the mythology, including Hades himself. But, Cronus swallowed each child's body shortly after their birth, because he was told that one of his child would dethrone him someday. The only one, the youngest child, Zeus, who through the machinations of their mother Rhea, escaped from that terrible fate. Later on upon reaching adulthood, Zeus forced Cronus to disgorge his other siblings into the world. Hades then joined Zeus and Poseidon in the divine war known as the Titanomachy. The protracted battle of the Olympian against the Titans and the Elder Gods for the power over the universe. Eventually, the Olympians defeated their father's generation of gods, triumphed over the Titans and claimed rulership over the cosmos. Poseidon was given the sea as his domain, Zeus ruled over the heavens, and Hades' reign extended over the underworld, the unseen realm to which the souls of the dead go upon leaving the world, as well as any things that exist beneath the earth. Hades was often portrayed with the guard dog of his kingdom, the three-headed hound Cerberus, and was often described as grim, gloomy, and mournful in his character and functions alike. A god who was severely righteous and inexorable in the performance of his duties. He acted in the manner of a jailer, ensuring that the dead mortals who entered his dark kingdom never escaped back to the light of the living world. His realm contained a place of punishment where some few who had gravely offended the gods, or the wicked in general would be subjected to torment or correction in their afterlife. He was pictured as a dark-bearded morbid god, carrying a two-pronged harpoon that looked like a pitchfork, and a key signifying his authority. In his travels, Hades rides in a black chariot drawn by four black horses and owned a far-famed cap or helmet, made and given to him by the Cyclops during the war against the Titans, which made whoever wore it invisible. This prestigious item was once used by the Greek hero Perseus, when he beheaded Medusa, the famous Gorgon of the Greek mythology. Since wealth comes from the depths of the underground, in the form of crops and minerals, the Romans, who had no death god of their own, often referred to Hades under the title of Pluton or Pluto, the god of wealth of the precious metals and jewels hidden far deep in the earth. The Romans, as well as the Greeks called him by this name, and this aspect of his characterization was more favorably viewed. In the Roman period, Hades or Pluto was merged with a similar god named Dis. The Latin word for rich. As the absolute ruler of a realm that was set apart from the rest of the world, Hades was sometimes conceived as the other Zeus, and could also be called Zeus of the underworld. But unlike the chief of Mount Olympus, no cults were dedicated to him. Due to the fact that he was the god the dead, Hades was worshipped almost nowhere in Greece. But his character also had a positive side, expressed by an alternative set of descriptions. In the guise of Pluto, the god of wealth, Hades and Persephone were subject of worship, although he was said to be indifferent to people's prayers. For the Greeks, generally preferred not to speak directly of death in connection with themselves or their friends, whether to avoid ill-omened remarks or to pass over unpleasant realities. They were so scared of Hades that even saying or utter his name would bring misfortune or death upon them. 
he invokes such dread that many would refer to Hades by other titles like the other Zeus or just Lord of the Underworld. For much the same reasons as they would say that someone had departed or refer to a dead person as the blessed one. Hades cared little about what happened in the world above, as his primary attention was ensuring that none of his subjects ever left his domain. He strictly forbade his subjects to leave his kingdom and would become quite enraged when anyone tried to leave, or if someone tried to steal the souls from his realm. His wrath was equally terrible for anyone who tried to cheat death or otherwise crossed his authority, as some Greeks found out to their sorrow. While usually indifferent to his subjects, Hades was very focused on the punishment of Sisyphus and Pirithous, particularly Pirithous, as he and his friend Theseus entered the underworld in an attempt to steal Persephone for himself. But Hades knew of their plan of capturing his wife, so he pretended to offer them hospitality. As soon as the pair sat down, snakes coiled around their feet and held them there. Theseus was eventually rescued by Heracles, but Pirithous remained trapped as punishment for daring to seek the wife of a god. The myths concerning Hades are few, but the most important myth of the god is probably the abduction of Persephone. It was said that Hades seized the young girl from among her maiden companions in a Sicilian meadow and brought her to the underworld to reign as his queen. And because of that, Demeter refused to return to Olympus but wandered over the earth, looking for her missing daughter. In her grief, she withhold her duties on earth, neglected the harvest, and famine quickly spread around the world. Finally, after seeing how precious Persephone was on her mother's eyes, Zeus convinced Hades to return Persephone, because Demeter's behavior would have led to mankind's total extinction. But regrettably, Persephone had eaten pomegranate seeds, or rather Hades tricked her on eating the fruit of the dead while she was in the underworld, and she was fated to remain there for part of every year. Persephone's time in the underworld coincides with winter, because of Demeter's sadness and sorrow. While her reappearance on the world above, coincides with spring and summer, characterizing her mother joy and happiness. Like Hades, Persephone occupies a dual role. As Demeter's daughter, she is connected with youthful and vitality, but as goddess of the underworld, she is also connected with death. Together with her consort, Persephone ruled the underworld, and both are the prime deities of the world of the dead. It's thus appropriate to say that Hades' union with Persephone probably does not result in any offspring. It was rare for Hades to leave his dark realm to visit Olympus or the Earth. He was not a welcome visitor, and even that is believed to have been an instance where he had just left the gates of the underworld, which was when Heracles shot him with an arrow as Hades was attempting to defend the city of Pylos. After he was shot, however, he traveled to Olympus to heal. He was unpitying, inexorable, but just a terrible not an evil god. He was the king of the dead not death himself, whom the Greeks called Thanatos and the Romans, Orcus, which is a total different entity. Despite modern connotations of death as evil, Hades was actually more altruistically inclined in mythology. The god was often described as passive rather than evil, his role was often to maintain a relative balance between the two worlds. With that being said, he was also depicted as cold and stern, and he held all of his subjects equally accountable to his laws. Any other individual aspects of his personality are not given, as Greeks refrained from giving him much thought to avoid attracting his attention. The grim brother of Zeus and Poseidon, the sinister Hades was the ruler of the Greek underworld, the dark realm to which mortals believed their souls would go after death. The name of the Lord of the Underworld appears in various different forms. In classical usage, the name of the Grim Lord was not applied directly to his kingdom, the Underworld, which was properly the House of Hades, therefore was named after him as its Lord and Ruler. Since the realm of the dead is ruled by Hades, the common and modern beliefs tend to associate the god with wickedness, evil and cruelty. But Hades was no enemy of the human race, nor was he radically different in nature from his more fortunate brothers, therefore, he was not a spiteful god. 
We can see that when he showed an uncharacteristic mercy to Orpheus, allowing him to leave the underworld with his lover Eurydice, as a reward for playing such a great melody to his queen Persephone, who was moved by the performance of the musician. Same goes for Heracles on his final labor to capture Cerberus. Hades agreed to Heracles' request which was to take the three-headed hound away as long as the Greek hero uses his sole hands to wrestle Cerberus. Hades once more chose not to turn his back to whoever came to him for a demand, but instead give them a chance to earn what they claimed for. If you've enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, a comment and share around you. Make sure to subscribe for more and turn on the bell. And as always, stay curious.